Southern New Jersey has had a severe infestation of the southern pine beetle. Once the trees have already been infested, once we already see pitch tubes on the trees, there is no real control. Removal is the only method of control at that point. Now when we get into the real active periods of the summer, the insect can move 50 feet a week. I hope it doesn't get north of the Mollica into our core of the Pinelands, because if it does, uh, we could have some big problems, you know, as far as fires uh, and, and just, just the devastation of that forest resource. It changed the whole character of the Pinelands. Southern pine beetle is an invasive beetle that kills pine trees in massive quantities. This is one of the few insects that really causes this sort of damage. This is an alarming situation. There's some threatened and unique species in the pine barrens. We also have the dwarf pygmy forest, which is highly unique as a habitat. And uh, we don't know what the impact is going to be there, but it, it could be very significant. There's a large number of known predators that attack the beetles underneath the bark, but there's one very prominent predator, Thanasmus dubius, which is called the gay checker beetle, that uh, follows by tracking the pheromone of the female and the odor from the tree. As the females are, are actually laying on a tree, Thanasmus dubius captures and kills them. Over the short term, the, the predators don't exert enough uh, population reduction to keep the, the trees from being killed. The most significant control measure is to cut the population of, out by cutting the trees to the ground that have the beetles in them. So the initial reaction is to do what we call cut and leave. If the population is starting to increase after we diagnose that there's an active infestation, uh, tree cutters go in, drop the trees in that spot, and then leave them if they're able to, at some future time to come back and then remove the trees, and that's a cut and remove. We don't really like to cut the forest for no reason, but if we cut that hole in the forest, when the beetles come out of those trees, they encounter this big gap and the uh, odor trails are interfered with as well. So there's a combination of effects there that causes the beetle not to persist in that spot. Our goals are right now is to try to stop the spread of the southern pine beetle from coming up north of the, of the, the Mulligan River into the core of the pine lands. We're trying to keep it in the South Jersey area, the southern six counties. Once you spot it, we got to go. We got to get out there and control it. We're, what we're doing is flying the pineland areas, trying to map where the beetle's at, and uh, taking that data and giving it to our ground crews to go ground truth. As far as the time period of getting out there, it can be difficult because we do have some approval processes we have to go through to make sure we're not affecting threatened, endangered species. Sometimes there's the uh, the other agencies like the Pine Lands Commissions, we might just have to make sure we run it through them. That's really the issue, I guess, is getting it through everybody's concerns, you know, and that, that can take time. But the process has gotten better, but we just need to make sure we get everything in place before the beetle starts ramping up when the weather gets warmer. Well, I've been here since 1950. I came here as a young man right out of school. I've been here ever since. On this site alone, there's about 286 acres right here. Without any previous knowledge, we usually don't get a call from a homeowner until they've lost several trees. And at that point, it's usually too late. I would say a good third of the property has been devastated by this bug. Now, there were some majestic pine trees in here, 
once they become infected, once they reach that brittle stage, they could fall very easily. Just a slight wind can make them fall. You bump them with a tractor, you're working near them, and they can just fall. I've had that happen to me. So the real concern is how do we start addressing the issue of notifying homeowners and notifying surrounding properties of an infestation moving in so that they can take some kind of precautionary methods. This tree had green needles on it in April. And by July, the needles had turned brown, and by August, they were all gone. There was no needles left. Now, this is about a 24-inch caliper tree. We cut this down, I believe, in August. And it's a crime to lose something like that. It takes, what, 70 to 100 years to grow a tree like that? And it's gone in a couple of months' time. See, there's no life left in that. It's just, it's done for. They suck the heart out of it, whatever it is. What we really need is a statewide effort to try to stem this thing. And probably most people don't even know it's happening. But there's still a lot of beautiful trees left out here, and uh, I hope we can save them. There's a farm meeting coming up next week and the pine beetle problem is going to be discussed. But I don't know what there is to discuss because nobody knows what to do. So hopefully we can develop this relationship and communication and cooperation to try and address the areas that are going to be impacted using the state's resource information of where these insects are traveling and communicating with the local property owners in the surrounding areas.